members and guests. I think we have a lot of guests here tonight. If you'd like to be a member, Betty at the table will give you a form to fill out and turn in, and you can become a member. I'm Mary Walton Jones. I'm the executive director of Sewer Heritage Museum, and have been here for seven years, um, and it seems like I've been here for 25. <laughs> anyway, um, I have some a few minutes with you before we turn you over to Sandy Thurlow. Um, I wanted to take care of our election right now because it is election month. I want to introduce you to our board, and I'm just going to ask them to stand, and Tony can wait because he's right here in the front. Our president is Tony Eagle This is Max McCartney, and I know Max here. Uh, our secretary, it, oh wait, our treasurer is Lee Johns, and I don't think Lee is here. He worked at the museum all day. Barbara Hodap is our reporting secretary. And tonight, Barbara's not here, but tonight, Alice Luckhart is back with us for the first time. Thank you. Linda Sutton, Britton. Gloria Avery White, Tonette Henry, Val Martin, Gail Randolph Rollins, and I always Rollins. I did it tonight. Uh, Judy Elkin Wood. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an unbelievable board. They don't just come to a meeting once a month. They come and they work, and they work, and they work. They do volunteer hours. They are incredible board. So I'm going to turn this over to Tony, but just tell you briefly, we would like to leave the board the same, so he is in charge of getting the vote in. Yes, we do have a, a great board, and we Certainly, we'd like to keep it the same as it is now, and then go forward very good. And we appreciate everybody coming out tonight to a special program tonight, and hope you all have a good time tonight. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> uh, all members in favor of keeping the board the same as it is, please raise your hands. <laughs> Anyone who objects, please raise their hand. <laughs> I'm not on the board, so you don't have to say. It's just wonderful to see everybody that's here tonight. And I, I see so many people that have a big pack impact on this Stuart Heritage and the museum. So I'm just so thrilled. And I think it's just divine providence that Don Armstrong is just back in town, and he was the founder. If there was one founder, there were several on his uh, core committee. But for the first uh, year or two, his address was the address for Sir Heritage, so that's pretty much of an indication, and he was president. And we still use some of the wonderful uh, printed material that he produced uh, way back then, almost 30 years ago. It'll be 30 years next year. So Don was born in Stewart, Florida in 1951, and he graduated from Martin County High School in 1969. He got a Master's of Architecture in 1985 from the University of Florida. And I just want to deviate right now. I think it's just so appropriate. His wife, who he married in 1989, right? Jessica Tano Armstrong. Will you stand up, Jessica? <laughs> she is a wonderful writer. She was working for the Stewart News, and she came to cover a Stewart Heritage function. We were having a home tour over in Atlantic Avenue. And look what resulted. <laughs> and Don's father was an architect for 
for him. And Jessica uh, had him tape his, and maybe Don did this, his, his memories uh, not long before he passed away. But they transcribed them, or Jessica did, and so it was through Stuart Heritage I got to read this transcription. And in it he said, I was the second architect in, in Stuart. And I didn't really, it didn't dawn on me until just recently that he meant Bert Keck. And Bert Keck designed this building. Oh, isn't that cool? And he was a very early architect in town. And then when Don Armstrong became an architect, he followed him. And uh, so now I'll go back to my introduction. <laughs> That's the way I am. Uh, he, he practiced architecture in Stewart in the 90s, and he became licensed in 1990, he said, after he was married to Jessica, I see. And um, in his practice, he specialized in doing historic preservation projects, which included our own Lyric, uh, Lyric Theater, and he uh, did the writing for the National Register application for that. In regard to teaching, he's published numerous articles in academic journals on topics such as the history of Tuskegee University, where he taught when he moved to Alabama uh, about his campus and the design studio methodology. I put your that, I'm sorry. The, he wrote two chapters in Space Unveiled, a book on culturally responsible design. And he's won awards and, uh, and was a peer reviewer for academic uh, architectural journals. And so uh, he <coughs> taught uh, in Tuskegee architecture, and he retired in 2016, and he moved back to Stewart two months ago. So, Particular, the uh, while we were uh, we got here a little bit early, and it's it's been sort of like a high school reunion time. It seems like every other person I have kind of uh, bumped into tonight ends up being someone, and I'm seeing more faces just as I talk. Uh, I remember from uh, from sometimes all the way back to kindergarten. Uh, <laughs> high school. So, and if I haven't recognized your face yet, please uh, come up afterwards and reintroduce yourself to me because I know many. Many folks out there probably um, I do do know from before. Um, I want to say it's a real privilege to be here, and I feel you know humble just uh, thinking about reflecting on all of, all of the work that's been done um, since um, I left, and, and um, since I uh, stopped uh, being as involved in Stewart Heritage as I had to kind of support my wife and family and begin putting more time into that. So it's. It's, uh, it's just awe-inspiring to me to see how far things have come you know, since, since that time. The, um, as, as Sandy mentioned, I grew up in Stewart in the 1950s and 60s. My parents came here in the uh, 1920s. Um, in fact, my mother came here in 1925 when the county was founded um, because uh, she moved here with her uncle, who was the first county judge. So she really had no choice but to be a Martin County girl right, right from the start. And uh, so her, her family was uh, very, very involved in the, you know, the town at that time. My dad moved here about the same time, around 1925 or so, uh, with his family, including uh, Davida uh, Sutton Taylor, who I know many of you all know and, and who uh, it, along with their daughter Linda and her daughters and granddaughters, and then very involved. Is uh, oh, is that a little better? Yes. Uh, uh, involved with the the um, with Stewart Heritage also. And that's been very very gratifying to me to, to see their involvement. Um, a few days ago, Mary Jones graciously took uh, Jessica and I on a, a tour of the, the uh, Stewart Heritage uh, Museum. And um, that was just amazing to me, just how, how far that's come and how much the, 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 the uh, collections have expanded as well as the exhibits. 
um, and how much more of the building is being used than it's been used in the past. The whole second floor was just kind of a storeroom the last time I was there, so it's it's uh, it's, it's amazing to me, you know, just how far that's come also. And, and just hearing stories about how things have really, um, uh, a, a lot of the, the good work that you all have done just in the last several years and kind of uh, going through kind of uh, second wind, so to speak, with the group and, and kind of getting your bearings again. And, and that's, that is very good to hear about also. I think it's important to remember that Stuart Heritage came out of the 1980s um, downtown redevelopment uh, group within Stewart because that really gives you some context that helps to explain a little bit about not only where Stewart Heritage came from but some of the uh, purposes and intentions that we were aiming for uh, with Stewart Heritage. Um, I think obviously everybody was excited about the idea of, of you know, preserving local history and having, having our own town historical group. Um, but there were, there were other aspects of this that went beyond that. The, the, um, right after I graduated and I came back to Stewart in the uh, mid-1980s, the city had just formed its Community Redevelopment Agency. And I know Mr. Foster and, and uh, Mayor Foster at that time and others will remember uh, that time. And, and the, the, uh, there was just um, talk beginning about what to do with downtown Stewart. Those of you all, who, who was here in the 1970s and, and went to Stewart, downtown Stewart regularly? Right so most of you all remember it was this, you know, dead as a cold mackerel. It was, there was uh, nothing going on at all in the, the evenings and the weekends. Um, there were a lot of vacancies. The, the downtown was uh, really making a lot of people wonder about why, why do we even need this old downtown anymore? Why do we need these old neighborhoods anymore? But the Community Redevelopment Agency um, came in and drew a, a series of steps, um, including uh, Stuart Main Street, uh, Stuart becoming a Main Street town, um, local architects and, and other designers kind of getting together and putting together uh, some ideas for a master plan for guidelines for the downtown. Um, there was a real momentum that built that uh, I think kind of shifted the thinking from, well, let's just bulldoze everything to let's take another look at what we have here and let's see what it might be if we could actually get owners that began uh, getting tenants back in the buildings again and businesses that would attract people into the downtown. So the, the final step in that uh, really was bringing um, uh, Andres Guane, uh, the renowned master planner who designed Seaside, Florida, and, and he and his wife, uh, Elizabeth Platterzyber, had a, had a planning firm called DPZ, and they were brought in and produced a master plan uh, for Stewart. And that was what really, that's when things really were galvanized, where everybody was kind of sort of marching in the same direction. It really pulled, pulled the community together in a really strong way. One of the, the proposals in that master plan was to create a local history museum, so a town history museum for Stewart. That was an idea that had been um, pitched before. I think maybe Ernie Lyons might have been one of the first folks. Um, I know Joe Crankshaw um, had spoken about this and, and really tried to, to get uh, interest in that. So there's already a little bit of a kind of a, some grassroots discussion that had been going on for, for years about how Stewart needed its own local history museum. So the, the, uh, when the master plan for Stewart was done, one of the um, elements of that was a, a local history museum. The purpose of the museum was to, to be for several things. One would be to help reinforce the kind of sense of identity for Stewart as it revitalized itself and, and to be part of the community, restoring a sense of pride in the community. And, and the idea would be that the museum, or not at that time there wasn't a museum, but the, the, the organization would be a way of doing that, so building community. Another aspect of that would be to, uh, that a local history organization would be a way to bring attention to the 
um, to the historic buildings of Stewart and show the public their value so that so that folks would begin preserving those buildings rather than demolishing them or um, remodeling them in, in ways where you really lost the, the historic integrity of the buildings. Another aspect of architecture tied in with the master plans um, uh, building guidelines uh, called the, the urban code and the architectural code of the master plan, uh, which are based and were based on a, a pretty um, a deep study of the traditional building types here in Stewart that were um, that were unique, that, that group of particular historic building styles, wood frame vernacular, Mediterranean style buildings, bungalow style. There is this particular pattern of historic building types that was part of Stewart's identity. And so part of the idea of forming a local history museum and organization rather was to be a place to educate the public, in particular uh, building owners um, who owned old buildings or were going to be building new buildings um, to have them appreciate that history, that architectural history, the urban town planning history of Stewart. Because Stewart has some really amazing, the, some of the subdivisions have some amazing um, uh, aspects to them as far as town planning from that sort of 1920s era when many of these subdivisions were built. But the so the idea of the local history uh, organization would be to help uh, reinforce that idea, that appreciation of Stewart's architectural heritage. And when the, when the master plan had been completed then, the, the, the group of us that had been involved with the master plan charrette and some of these other activities leading up to it um, called a meeting um, to see if there would be public interest to start a local history um, uh, organization. So the, the first meeting we had was right here in the Civic Center, and I don't think it may have been in this room. Was anyone here at that meeting? The very first one. Can anyone recall, was it in here, or was it one of the other meeting rooms? I think it was in a smaller room. This is the only room they had. Well, maybe it was this room. It probably was this room. Thank you. Um, but that first that first meeting was where the, the we really got things going, and at that point we were simply those of us that were advocating for the, the organization were simply here to say why we thought it was a good idea, try to get uh, see if there was interest in the community, and see what we could do about that. Where would we go from there? So the the, the group was very enthusiastic. Um, and you could just you could just tell as soon as we began talking about it. Like maybe maybe this the topic we were talking about was one that attracted the right kind of people to come. But the, there was a real um, you know, sense of agreement in the room. This was the time this had come. This was an important thing to do. So the following that meeting, um, we organized, and the first thing we did was we created a membership list, which is probably a legal ad, and we passed it around, everybody signed it up, signed up on it, and put their name and address on it. And we created a mailing list uh, from that, um, and began having regular meetings. So it really started with that first meeting, and then we made sure we got everybody's names before they, before they walked out the door, and we wanted to make sure we get everybody back again. So we, we uh, you know, contacted everybody and then had a series of meetings um, in which we, we um, organized as a group. We formed a, a, a set of officers, and I volunteered to be the first president. We had a, a full slate of officers, um, and we began holding regular meetings. The, the next step was, and this was thanks to, to Tom Thurlow and his firm, we um, became a nonprofit organization. So Tom kindly donated his services and walked us through all the paperwork. Anybody who's been through any kind of incorporation, uh, whether it's nonprofit or for profit, those are the very, uh, very detailed uh, things that you have to do to, to uh, get that status. So uh, Tom um, and his firm very graciously uh, took care of that for us. Uh, we filed our papers and became uh, a nonprofit organization. Along with that, what came with that then was a, uh, the, the Board of Incorporators. I believe uh, many of those then became
became part of our first board of directors also, as I recall. Um, so within, I would say within a couple of months, um, we were pretty organized. We, were, we, we had a, a pretty good core of people that were committed uh, to the cause. And we had an organization, and we had uh, officers, and we incorporated. And the next step then was where to hold meetings, because those were kind of ad hoc at first. And uh, pretty early on, the city of Stewart uh, allowed us to use the, uh, the city uh, commission chambers. Um, and we began, hold, began holding our meetings there. So, I mean, that really was feeling official by that point. We had everything we needed. We were incorporated. We had a place to meet. It was a nice place. We weren't just meeting in each other's uh, you know, living rooms and dining rooms. Um, and we had a, you know, actual um, uh, officers and everything we needed. We continued to, to meet for, well, I would say about the first year, year and a half or so, and during that time, the city purchased the old Stewart Feed store um, and had it restored by uh, eminent architect um, Peter Jefferson, who um, did, did a wonderful job on the building, uh, maintaining the, the character of it, um, but making it, bringing it up to building code and making a very you know, in, inhabitable, uh, usable building out of it. So about that time, um, I, because I, through my uh, work with the, the CRA and Main Street and some of the other uh, things that I've been involved with, had, had made some, some good uh, contacts uh, with the city of Stewart, Terry O'Neill and Craven Alcott, some of you all may remember them who worked in the, the planning uh, office there. Um, and I began having a conversation with them about would the city of Stewart be willing to let us use the Stewart Feed Store to found a, a museum of local history and Stewart Heritage would manage the building and um, you know, uh, we would request, we're requesting that the, the city allow us to do that. And um, the city, I think, must have been thinking about also because they came back with a yes you know, pretty, pretty quickly. And uh, the next thing we knew, we, we uh, got what we had asked for, and, and everybody's kind of looking at each, other, at each other, what do we do now? We have this whole building, and we're responsible for it, and, and uh, what do we do next? Well, the, the, um, the members of Stewart Heritage, as well as members of the community, really came through in a big way on this, because as soon as the word got out that there would be a local history, the, our first local history museum, um, but in the Stewart Feed Store, everybody loves the Stewart Feed Store. Everyone has a memory. Uh, anyone who grew up here has a memory of going to the Stewart Feed Store, either for feed or for the baby chicks that they would sell at Easter. Or, um, yeah, one, one thing or another, the uh, Manita Park Morrison, whose father uh, built the original building as a George Parks uh, general store, uh, was still living around this time, and she had. Uh, been uh, really part of the beginning of Stewart Heritage, allowing us to uh, kind of get her, gather her memories, and go through her old photographs and things. So there was a, a, a kind of a, a little bit of a sort of DNA there already there within the organization for the building. Um, but as soon as we announced that we would be founding the museum there, we began getting these offers of just amazing things. And some of the, the first things I recall was a a uh, soda fountain, I hear there's two now, so I'm not sure which one of the two, but it, this was a soda fountain from one of the original old uh, drugstore soda fountains in town. Um, the Dyer family donated the uh, beautiful glass, uh, wooden glass cabinets from the old Dyer uh, dry goods store. The um, uh, Peter Jefferson uh, was walking down the street one day on Land Avenue where, where uh, he and Joan lived at that time and uh, came across a dumpster with a huge mural leaning against it. And uh, uh, one of the old uh, homestead houses on Atlanta uh, Avenue was being restored, and as usual, it's what often happens, just uh, you know, a lot of the stuff that was inside ended up going out to the, the trash pile in the dumpster, including um, this uh, painting, this mural, which uh, if you've been down at the basement of the building, it's down there, and it has the, uh, many of the early subdivisions of Stewart. Uh, it was painted, I think, in 1925. It was, it was done by um, Ernie Lyons' his father. I can't recall his name, but he was a developer at that time and had this painting 
created. So it was sort of a promotional um, a thing that he had <coughs> done. But you can imagine that, I mean, a painting of what Stewart was like in 1925 with every street, every building, um, almost you feel like every tree that was there is on this, this, this document that you know, we now have that shows these things. Um, and the, the um, donations just kept coming in. The, the, another that I remember early on that um, I was speaking with uh, Sandy about just a few days ago, um, the county called and said that it was, uh, it, it had all of its old records in this uh, warehouse, I think it was over on Old Dixie near the fairgrounds or something, where they had been keeping all of the county records and some of them, I think, went back to Day County and to May St. Lucie County. I'm trying to remember the exact kind of history of the, where the area that today Martin County came from, but it went back even before uh, Martin County was created. And then they took up there and got all the minutes of the Martin County uh, commission meetings um, in big bound books, um, as well as just box after box after box after box of letters and promotional brochures and all the stuff if you're kind of an, eph an ephemera addict like I am, you just love old printed stuff from the 19 teens and 20s. Um, this is like a warehouse full of it, just given to us to do keep as much of it as we wanted to. So um, we and I remember you know several weeks of uh, a lot of us just going back and forth down there and, and kind of you know dusting things off and kind of wiping them down and and uh, schlepping them back to the, the Stewart feed store. And, and I don't even know where we put them. I guess we just kept found a corner somewhere and started there and just kept stacking stuff until we ran out of room. We, we took as much as they would give us, and, and that pretty much was our policy. If it was old and there was a real connection with Stewart, with uh, people or places or events that had to do with Stewart heritage, you know, and uh, it was at least 50 years old, we would, we would welcome it and, and find a, a place to put it. And, and so the donations just uh, kept coming. The, the, um, uh, the next um, problem we had then, these are all good problems obviously, was how to, you know, what to do with all this stuff because we couldn't just store it, you know, our, our mission was uh, to display it in the museum. And so myself and some of the other members uh, met with uh, some uh, museum designers as well as some of the directors of uh, local museums, the Elliott Museum, the uh, Moxahatchee Historical Museum. And we kind of created a nice support system of, of people who had been there, done that, as far as founding museums, and we had an awareness of, of exhibits and kind of knew what we would be facing and how to approach it. So we had a, a lot of good input from them and kind of processed all that and, and uh, just gradually started, you know, putting, putting together displays as, as best as we could uh, kind of figure out how to do it with what we had. And, um, and that was how the museum started. So, so if both of these things, both the, uh, the beginnings of Stuart Heritage and the beginnings of the museum, um, we had kind of a, a, a vision of something we wanted to do. We kind of knew how we were going to go about doing it. We weren't real sure. We were all a little nervous at times, a little scared in private. You know, what are we really doing here? But we just kind of kept the faith and kept going, got through the rough patches, and things just kept going and going. And from what I'm seeing, that's, that's really continued for the last couple of decades. It's, just, it's a wonderful thing to see, you know, that, uh, that, that things, thing, things didn't just sort of fizzle out along the way, which they often do with, you know, organizations that are struggling to get it off. But, but um, it, it's very heartening to see uh, just uh, at what a high level you guys are doing things now and how far things are coming. So thank you very much for uh, <coughs> listening to me tonight. And uh, hopefully it's you guys.
programs, and, you know, arrange for getting programs. And so when Mary asked me to give a program, I know how um, nerve-wracking it is to have someone you could hope to depend on. So that's what I'm doing tonight. But I, I used the photographs I had at home in my collection that I do most of the things are at the feed store. But uh, I, I just borrowed one for I needed it particularly. Uh, so I'll tell you about that. But these I just thought, that you, they're very familiar. We've used them many, many times. Uh, but you can just see how much it still has the character it did originally. And notice it was painted white at first. And then this is a logo. And is Anne McMillan here tonight? There's Andy Mac. Yes, so we that that first year in 1989, we were celebrating um, the birthday of the, uh, of the county. Was it the county or the city? It was, yeah, it was the 75th birthday. City. City. The city. And so, uh, she borrowed this picture. We have, still have a whole supply of postcards made from it. And yeah, we have made beautiful ones done uh, that are um, uh, done in a modern way and very clear, like the photograph. But Don's father designed our logo from this. And we have, uh, we still use it on our newsletters. Just an ad, George Fox, isn't it wonderful to have the genuine artifact building for our you see? And this is a, a postcard, a lovely postcard. And when I did Stuart on the St. Lucie for my book on uh, Stuart, I had it, the cover in mind before I ever had a page put together for the book because I thought this was so perfect and with the George Parks store right in the center. Uh, I happened to, when I was going through my Stuart Heritage file, I have these photographs, and I had no idea where I got them from. But I thought, you know, you can scan things now, and even though they're very terrible images, they're a little bit improved when you scan them. And this one just amused me, what it was written on them. And we said how we all went to the feed store. Did anyone go to get some cut worm bait? I mean, here, citrus pulp. These were the things I could read off the window. Hot feet and cut worm bait. And then the, it's, notice it said Stuart Feed Store. What we have on the front today is Stuart Feed Supply. So its name has changed a bit. But the phone number then was 76. And it looks like it was in the 30s. <laughs> this one, I do know where I got this photograph from. It's from Francis King, um, <coughs> Nancy Crawford's aunt. From the, the Francis King, Nancy Crawford's aunt. And um, notice that the feed store uh, is painted white at this time. This is a, a, a photograph that the owners gave to me, um, they, uh, Alice and Tony, when they sold it to the city. They had some photos they had taken of it, and they gave me this photo. And uh, it was Alice's father, Mr. Joseph Beckage, that uh, uh, owned the property that was sold to the city. And there's our founder, Joe Frankshaw, who was right there in the beginning. And then Kathy Reeder. And then Roy Lakehoff moved out of town before Don did it, really. And he had so much to do with historic preservation in our town. And But he uh, lives in Utah. And um, I got his photograph off the internet. That's our recovery they come. His son Todd said he's going to be coming to Florida in December. And here we have Joe Jefferson, who was there, Stuart, during this busy time with all the, you know, they talk about a perfect storm. And, uh, and the, all the things with the architects and Peter had been restoring and saving buildings. And Boo Lowry had been moving for him, Booth and moving them for him, and that was quite a, a, a combination. And this, um, um, these plants were in my box of Street Heritage, and they were done by um, Peter, and I, they're for the Bee Store Museum. And I asked Joan about them, and she said, "Oh, he, it's he just probably gave his services to the town." 
uh, because he did that very often. And I see Joan here. I hope when we pass the mic around, I hope these people will make a comment. Uh, this, uh, is, Catherine Rose was the loveliest lady, and she was so enthusiastic, and she would have events and antique sh shows and participated in uh, the, uh, the uh, home tours very early. And this is Mary and Jutka, and she's out of town now, and she's still around. But Don was talking about all the work you had to do to get uh, incorporation. And Tom, I know, told Mary to get all the sales slips together, all of this and that. And I think we wore her out so much that first year that she just kind of quit on us. She couldn't take it anymore. But she was invaluable. She worked at the, later worked at the Elliott and at the Flagler. And she was a librarian at the time. But she was so wonderful. And like she stored, remember we had that Bench from the courthouse. She had that in her home for a while um, before we had a museum. And this is Shirley Bland, and she started out as a volunteer at the Elliott and then became their archive manager. And she had the system for how they did their acquisitions. And she brought that um, system over to Surrey Heritage, and you can still see the little numbering system. And that's what Mary has been doing, going through everything and trying to track it down and match everything up. But she brought that system and the other Museum was very um, like uh, happy for Surrey Heritage to just take over the, the local history because uh, they wanted um, us to do that. For the piece. And this was this Shirley and Catherine. We were just getting ready to have this uh, commemorative album for our uh, anniversary uh, and uh, we had like only a month or two to do it and they thought we could do get some pictures together and caption to do it and we got it together of course we went to what was then first national bank and said would you please pay for it and they did the back of it has a nice bank ads on it but we used this logo and Ida Fry did the painting and so many people just pitched in and gave her Talents and uh, we were so proud that we had that. And they reprinted it several times. Probably still have some left. And so I covered them. And look at this. This is what distracted. This is what distracted Don and Jessica. I mean, you could just be full time story here to do more. And uh, so by the time the museum opened, he and Jessica were parents. They sent me this picture of Trey a long time ago, seven years ago, but he was already up. Uh, and he's uh, living with his aunt now. But uh, that was at the grand opening. And so we put her and your son in. I thought I'd put my son in. This, he was talking about how we did it. These are the cases. And they were not donated to us, Don. We uh, had to buy them. And I think Ann, yes, Ann McMillan, and had to put a retainer on it. She knew about them first. And so we didn't have a museum, and we stored them in Smithfield. And they would let us put them in an empty store, and then they'd rent the store. And that's my son, a freshman in college. And we had to carry them from one store to the other if that wasn't being rented. So then this is you, and we got a place for them and have them in the museum. As we And this, at first, we had uh, the Mrs. Peters smoked fish had to, um, well, uh, quite a few people wanted to um, share it. <coughs> wanted to use it for, um, for uh, commercial purposes, gift shops and different things. And um, the one that got it was uh, Mrs. Um, Peter Smooth Fish and I, um, Craig um, Worley, who has it, um, had it, you know, but here I have his dad. It was his parents, it was the seniors, and Robert Worley, and like they could keep the museum open because they had their store open, so we didn't have, it, have to have 
the volunteer there all the time. So it helped us, but look how bare it is. Mary, can you believe that? Look at that. Just empty. It wouldn't be a problem to take everything out of the museum then. And that was a little uh, projector that the school system had, and the only things were so archaic then. We had like a talking program that would go with real slides that would advance. <laughs> and I think they still use the text to that that I created for their um, docents a little bit. Uh, I know that Mary, uh, that uh, Betty Hardwick has shown me that they still use it. And then Kathy Reeder was the president of when we got the museum, and she was me she had to do the negotiations and, and sign the contract or get the, work those things out um, when she became president and Don became a more uh, attentive daddy and husband. And these are not the books the way they looked at that dirty, cluttered barn where they took them to the dumps, so many to the dump. But what we did, we asked, this is Carolyn Zemba, who is a Pomeroy. We know we have Pomeroy Grove by Walmart. She was a lifetime abstractor, as is her daughter over there, um, Ellen, second generation. But when Don and Tom and, and Joe were going through all that clutter, they said, we need somebody that really knows how what we have to select. And Carolyn came down there and said, well, get the number one record book and this and that. We did not take everything they said we could have. We would have any, I mean, it would have filled this room. It was just so much clutter. We took all those record books. So we got the earliest ones because Carolyn said that's what we should do. But they had been a problem all through the years. That's Shirley Bland again, the one who uh, was the archivist. And here we have Lori. Lori is here. We have so many people here that were important at the very beginning. Lori was our uh, third president, I think. And then Marion. Uh, is this still right? Very good. Look at that. I wanted to use this pretty picture that Tom took of Lucille in her uh, Seminole Indian garb when they were celebrating uh, Santa Lucia Day in Fort Pierce. But she was our fourth president, I believe. And here I saw that, uh, that Mabel Witham is here tonight. And she was on the board at the very beginning and involved with things. And she um, was on the museum committee figured out of how we were going to handle the museum. And Isabel Williams is Ernie Lyons' sister. And she was very active uh, for, for many years in the last years of her life. She loves story heritage. And Robert Lennick just died this year. He was a dentist. And um, maybe when we pass the mic around, you, uh, Lucille knows if he was very involved with the Seminole Chicken exhibit too, but there's this was the beginning of the train, the little town exhibit. He was a, um, a railroad cop for Mama Railroads, and uh, he and his cronies built this wonderful camera, which we, isn't it one of the most popular things at the museum? You can comment when you go around. And I happen to have this picture of my Kiplinger, and I know how, uh, how generous the Kiplinger is. And we were invited to the boathouse that uh, is on their property at, at uh, Bay Street Lodge. And look what's hanging in their kitchen. It was purchased at the seat store, I think. And Terry Randolph was one of our early uh, presidents through, uh, you know, we had some rough times. And he, 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 he was president twice, really. And uh, his sister Gail is here. She just voted her into the board. And she's been a volunteer um, since she retired, I think. And, but she, since 2010, she's been on the board. But you'll be appalled at what our museum looked like. Look at these pictures I had in my collection. Can we believe that it was falling down the hill? So they had to like make a, a foundation for it. And if we had any idea that we were going to use the downstairs for a museum, for a part of the museum, we sure would have had them 
Maybe it's a foot higher, so we went walk our head. But look at it. Is it wasn't it just a disaster? And so uh, this was the uh, renovation, and we got this uh, big brand from Tallahassee. And uh, we had an, an architect that wanted it to be uh, authentic, like Don would want it, you know. And uh, so one thing she wanted was for it to be painted white, like those are the early pictures. But uh, it certainly looked improved. And um, in that early, the early pictures, we had Spirit Main Street upstairs, you know, the stairs were on the other side. Just look at that. If only they left it at that high, we would bump our heads. <laughs> and then Lucille, whose special interest is archaeology, she and the, the Archaeological Society made sure that everything was investigated and gone through to see what was there. And then this was from the paper. But the article was so funny, people saw them painting it white. And they were appalled. And every, they, David Collier said, stop. OK, it's authentic to do it white. But we are used to it red. And everyone living is used to it red anyway. And you, we've got to paint it red again. So they did. And I just put this in because I thought it was so wistful of my husband, Tom. We still dress this probably that same shirt and pants. <laughs> and Carolyn, that was when we moved in. But when I was a young one, Jackie, who's in back when she was just a little kid, you know, maybe three or four, he was so enthralled with Carolyn Simba's articles, her, her columns. <laughs> And he was talking about her before I could even think of anything but just like getting through the day. And uh, so there they are, old friends, looking out the window. Maybe a train was going by. <laughs> and then people, it wasn't fixed up inside. Um, members came, this is uh, Donna, this is your neighbor across the street. He's, he was helping out. And that's Ellen up there, and I told her I had her picture in my slideshow. It's the only picture I had of her, so I put her there as she was painting and fixing things. But you know, in every family, there's somebody that will, or hopefully in every family, there's somebody that will be interested in history and family history. And so Ellen is the one in her family that has carried on and helped out with home shows. And she was our editor of our newsletter for many years. And she's right here. And I hope when we go around, you will say you're one of the stars of the slideshow. <laughs> and then I, when I had to write up about uh, this event, I uh, took, and I saw that Jessica referred to the same article. But Mrs. McCormick, when she, in the 70s, she brought an article about the Miami Dade Thrust because um, they were, and it said the word Stuart Heritage back in 72, when, uh, and Ernie Lyons wrote a column that we need a Stuart Heritage. And it's funny I, how we ended up with that name, when, when Joe and Don and Kathy and Roy got things going. And so we were out, they had to empty everything out of the museum. And for two years, they were in the shopping center over there. We call it Kendrick Plaza, over there on Johnson Avenue in Colorado. Um, we'll copy it, we'll copy it, they let us don't have space. And so we just moved in, and this is our rare foster. I put former mayor there because I got mixed up. I was a decade off. I think he was mayor in 2002 when we moved back. And that's dear little Mrs. McCormick uh, signing in. She was so happy uh, that we were back in the museum. And these are those darn books. <laughs> those books were so heavy. And we took them. I didn't do it. But they put them upstairs on the second floor. And as soon as we moved in, the, and they just spent about three hundred or 400000 on restoring it. And the, the roof the ceiling was sagging. And the city said, you have broken the building, and it's your fault. You put too much heavy stuff up there. 
And Chris the Wiki was just like a bulldog, but anyway, and they said it wasn't our fault. But we had to get those uh, heavy books out of the upstairs, and then they were put downstairs. I thought they would surely be ruined, but they they stayed nice. Uh, they got lots more bikes in them, maybe, but they they weren't um, completely ruined by being underneath. And at that time, it was just the same floor. And there's Carolyn Thelba, and you know she did, those are her books behind her. And uh, there are probably still a few available made from her columns. And it was her friend, Mabel Whitman, who uh, organized them and made them into a book for help. And there's our totally. Through all of the different people that were uh, running things, and a little bit of friction now and then, never friction with totally. He's just loving and gentle, and that's he's with Sally Glassburn, who was uh, our manager for uh, for about ten years. And here's the one picture I had to get from uh, Mary, and it's in a frame right there by a checking desk. But it has Tolly, and it has Don Churchill, who was on the board for. 25 years, I think, and then she just had to go out of town and live where her children are because she is, you know, getting up to them. But this is the one I wanted to have a picture of her because that's Courtney uh, Bauer, and, and that is who endowed the museum enough that we could afford to restore it finally. Uh, and it has allowed us as an endowment. Uh, to function and be able to, you know, be what we are today with Mary and the board's wonderful stewardship. But that's Chris Wick, who uh, kept things going for years and years. And this is is Betty Hardwick. I said, are we sure that's you, Betty? And Sybil Miller was lovely. She had to move away, but she was a wonderful asset to the organization. But, and here. Mac McCartney, and I said, Kathy, I don't have a picture of Mac, and then this wonderful age, you can just take it with your phone and send it in, so this is a fresh photograph taken in front of the museum with Mac right there, um, smiling in front of the display, uh, celebrating his uh, 25 years, and he's been president, he's been uh, on the board for years, and his radio knowledge and um, uh, speaking knowledge has really been an asset. And here's Chris. Uh, she, we were having a home tour when she, her stomach was hurting her, and she said, I don't feel good. And they realized she had pancreatic cancer, and she was so great dealing with that. But this is why Story Heritage Museum is so wonderful. And this is this was in the paper. And it's amazing with uh, how it came out so clear. But Bob Green and Morris Walton. And this is what it's just all about. It's like the last cracker barrel. And they enjoyed it so much and we enjoyed them tremendously. And there's Tolly. He's been working. He worked on he worked through Chris. He 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 dovetailed with Chris very nicely because he um, he fixed everything and uh, he made do and they got along very beautifully. And there and there was a time when the only way I could uh, participate was like doing posters for home tours and things like that. And then we, I started building up all these posters and. He what to do with them, so he was putting them on the ceiling. I just took this picture up. This this was when the pots, the, the Germans were here, and Jackie Williams came. But I thought, oh, I'm going to show that. How I'll, I'll totally put my posters on the ceiling, and then they started peeling off. And it went, oh, it was awful. Pretty so now things are so much nicer. But we actually, and remember this, Mayor Foster, how you went to Potsdam, Germany with Kathy, and we had, we made a Potsdam connection while Paul Kruger, not Paul, while Carl Kruger was on the board, and they came from Potsdam, Germany, and visited. But this is the one who really has made the difference. 
Mary Jones has come. She, you know, she is the person in her family, and this is this is Rose, and there has never been a lovelier person, and there hasn't been ever been an older family. It goes back to the Robux and Roba Creek and Bathinger and oh, it's just such an old, wonderful family. And uh, then her daughter has taken on this responsibility and her organization still and her uh, obsession for cleanliness and her, um, her friendships with her board. I mean, it has made all the difference in the world. So this is what I wrote. And Tom doesn't proofread for me, so, so forgive me, everybody. When Mary Jones became president, Stuart Heritage and the museum were in rough shape. The museum looked like a cluttered attic. The building was infested with termites and other insects. I didn't name them. There, are, there was a great deal of rot, and the air quality was poor. No one knew where things were, and the relationship between Stuart Heritage and the city of Stuart was poor, to say the least. Everything was moved out of the museum. Can you imagine that? Everything moved out of that museum. And so it could be restored, and special forces were the ones who got the, the bid. And there's been more restoration as things happen, just like at your home, constant, and she attends to them. But with Courtney and her husband's endowment, and how Mary could uh, handle all of this, and her work with the board of directors, and of course, it's Seacoast National Bank that's making the endowment uh, uh, kind of stay the same. And then this is Peck's bad boy. Uh, he has made a big difference, too. He's kind of, are you here? No, I don't think he is. This is John Cooper, and he is, along with Joe and myself, and this might mean that we're all picked by boys, I don't know. But we are honored wearing members of the board. And um, he is friends with a guy named Richard Baker, who is like goes back to the earliest pioneers. And I think Richard's in very bad shape now, but he's a sign tape painter and uh, can do uh, you know spray paint like they do cars and lighting. But he did, he redid all of our signs and restored the big metal round sign out front. And our big museum would not look that good if those signs had not been restored. And it takes a special person to be able to do that. And John is from an old, old family. His great grandfather was our first marshal when we were incorporated in 1914. But, uh, he is his own guy, and he's a very good painter. One day I saw him painting the red underneath the railing on the stairs. I don't even see how he got in there to paint him. And then, Betty Hartwick has been here three years. And, and, and this is a, quite not a real recent picture, but I went in there, and her little granddaughter was in her seat. And she's so funny that she thinks that museum is Betty's. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. And then I asked, uh, as I was figuring out how to get Betty's picture, and um, I asked Lida, her granddaughter, for one. And so she sent me this cute one of the other granddaughter in the same seat. And this is Lida. And it is so wonderful. Someone young involved in story heritage. She uh, has had both of her children after she became involved and was doing her newsletter. And it's just been so wonderful to have Betty. And it's like Mary, it's her whole family to work. We have all of uh, Betty's family helping with uh, having her, not all of them. But uh, we do. The elder son helps. He built the benches out front from the railings of the old Jensen Beach Bridge. Now, that the ones that Mac was sitting on, now is that in meat? Okay, and this woman has made all the difference in the world. And her, her 
her husband, Greg, who's very shy, but together, the millions of words they have written about our community have made so much more interest stirred up about history, and uh, so much of it is searchable. It is just no other town in this world, I think, has that kind of coverage. And we're so fortunate, and we're so glad she's here tonight and her book uh, on Stewart. And uh, so she uh, was responsible, I think. I might be misspeaking, but I think she was the one that got this up and running and got this guy, Aaron Welch, to do the website. And we have a surprise at the end connected with his website. And this is Greg. And on the website, it has all, and this is just a small portion of their vignettes that have been published in the uh, in Stuart uh, News. And it just goes on and on. It wouldn't fit on the screen to scan or to capture, but the words and the topics and just all the offbeat subjects that they, it's just wonderful. And here, this is Donald's cousin. Ginger Ehaw, I guess that's how you say it. Um, it just, but she was, her grandmother, Don's aunt, was in her 90s, and she loved a feed store, and Mary had this idea of having uh, Wednesday morning coffees. And so, uh, a cocktail home, uh, and that's who, uh, she worked, Ginger works for, they supplied the donuts and coffee. And this was um, ten years, uh, five years ago, right, Mary? Five years ago. So they've been meeting every Wednesday, and it just grows and grows. I came last week, and this is just a few in one direction. The men are in the front, the women are in the back, and they are just talking and having a wonderful time. So Don, you really have started something, you and your friends. And the day I happened to come by, I love serendipity, there was this man and his daughter, and I said, well, who are you? And he said, I was born in this building. We live in Lake Worth, and my granddaughter was driving me around, and I told her I was born in an old building over there, and she said, well, there's an old building. And he was born upstairs at the feed store in 1940. And so we are going to get more of his story. And he, daughter. He doesn't need words. So you never know. And so when Kathy was president, I think uh, Joe had, um, was working for the Miami Herald at that time, and uh, the Lions children, uh, Ernie had died, and they had these boxes of albums that they were going to go to Stuart Heritage. And Kathy, I think, said, or it was Sam Milton said, I think you can do an exhibit from this. So, and that was 1990, so that was early on. So the first exhibit in the Courthouse Cultural Center was um, the Lion exhibit. And at that time, I put up photographs on the, on the landing. And Stuart Heritage paid for the printing at that time. And so I think it was $400, the whole show. And so those are still on the landing at the Courthouse Cultural Center. After 27 years, Tom and I had a prank because the phone board got so, you know, torn apart like they were on the ceiling of the feed store. And then we uh, had this plaque right there. Probably people in Surrey Heritage may not know what Simon and Mary does. But right there, for 27 years, we had a little history display where people you know, are having cocktails and art shows, but they've been there all that time. And here are the books. The rest of the story of the books. We, um, you know, they were downstairs in, in the basement. No one could really use them because you have to have a big table to open them up and a system. So they were just being stored. And uh, so we have this new wonderful clerk who is a history buff. And she says, oh, I want them. And I think Mary said, take them. So, but we saved them. And so now 
there in a kind of like a shrine right off the clerk's office desk. And you know who this is over here? It started out to be a wedding room. And this is Tolly and Howard. And their wedding, uh, I, I announced their wedding certificate. And here's a close up of it. Another wedding day. And here is the soul of our museum. Isn't it just too good? <laughs> but all these things go together. And uh, we have our courthouse cultural center that the architects say, Peter Jefferson, Don, and it's just wonderful. And that uh, we have Tolly and Helen's picture in it, and uh, those books that always broke the top of the museum. And got into so much trouble. Now, I'm, uh, we have a uh, surprise at the end, but I want to just have a few people talk about, like, uh, Kathy. No, you, I promise you didn't have to. So, uh, such a steward gal, the garden club and the newspaper and the women's club and everything. So I, I went and I met Dawn and Kathy and um, Mabel, I think, was there and, and we just started visiting and I ended up on the board, I don't know, four or five years, I guess. And I was the secretary and then uh, somehow Dawn left and uh, Kathy was president and she talked to me into being vice president and then Year or so went by, and she got a real busy job, and so I ended up president. Which I get—I don't want to be president. I have little babies at home, so. Um, but it was such fun. We made gifts, and we sold stuff, and we started the home tour, and seeing Catherine Lewis on there just brought tears to my eyes because she was so wonderful. And we just—we had a blast. It was just such fun. So thank you for keeping it going. It's, it's really cool.
lot of friend pictures. And I immediately applied for the job of doing the programs, and I did them after that for 10 years. And what a privilege of meeting all these people that keep coming back. Thanks again for being here. Confusion Quarter. 
If any of you were wondering where that got started, it was Anita's husband, Murph, who, who uh, made that. I used to sell t-shirts in my children's store downtown uh, uh, with regard to Confusion Corner. The other things that uh, uh, Don touched on, uh, there were a bunch of designs for the Roosevelt Bridge back in those years. One was a tunnel, one was an aqueduct. And Joan will remember all of those hot discussions that we had. Uh, in addition to us, Andreas Gwani coming to town and calling our um, outdoor band area a urinal. That was interesting. <laughs> um, Don, you didn't tell all these secrets. <laughs> In order to save the Cultural Arts Center, which was the courthouse, the Bar Association passed out yellow bandanas, and we wore those to the Board of County Commissioners meeting, if any of you remember that. And that truly made an impression on the Board of County Commissioners, because they knew that the large crowd there was in support of keeping the courthouse. And Roy Laycock, that you saw a photo of, he went around downtown and other places wanting to preserve the lyric. The lyric, when I was in business, was a church. And he went around and sold seats at $500 a piece to start raising money to save the lyric. And I'm, I'm hoping he will come back and we'll be able to thank him because look at the success right there. So historic preservation was moving right along. And of course, we thank Don for taking this and shepherding and the organization that's here today. Uh, the Park Store was built in 1901, and you have just heard all of the history. We have also had another first this year. The City of Stewart has adopted a comprehensive historic preservation ordinance. All right. We all thought we had one, but we didn't. So this year, they have adopted it. There is now a program in place, just like Martin County has in place, where you can uh, fill out an application if you have a historic home. You can apply for consideration, and they will put a plaque on your on your property uh, with a designation. Maple Witham got one last year from the Martin County group, but now the City of Stewart has a program, a process that we can all participate in. And I'm currently doing the research on the George W. Parks building to put it on the National Register. Thank you. I saw that Linda Gary has a uh, 3D thing on for the, for the House of Refuge, and I said, Mary, it's so wonderful, and Mary Jones, and she said, uh, we have it on our website, and we do. It's up and running again, and it is thanks to another old-time family, Drew Pittman, uh, has a uh, has that, and he will demonstrate, and you can go visit the museum. We want you to come to the real museum, but isn't this amazing that Drew can, uh, can take us to the museum from here? Good evening. I uh, moved to Stewart in 1975 when I was born, from Mary Nell Pittman. But uh, this is neat for me. Uh, my, my family moved to Stewart in 1919. Um, a lot of you knew Andy Pippen and my family, and uh, I'm going to tell you a quick history story that Andy, my grandfather, Pop Pop, didn't tell a lot of people, but back in the day, uh, over on Fraser Creek, where my great-grandfather had a fueling station, Catherine Pepper just come to visit, right? Yeah. Catherine Pepper dropped her sunglasses overboard <laughs> in Fraser Creek, my grandfather swam to the bottom, back when you could probably see the bottom. He got those glasses and he got a five dollar tip back then. So that's a story most people don't know. But um, a few years ago, I bought a camera to help me in my real estate business. It's a 3D camera. And um, what it does is it takes 3D images and um, you'll be able to... My idea was I want to be... I was the first in the world to photograph a jet. And I was the first in the world to do a, 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 a yacht. And I believe this may be the first museum in the world that was ever done with this technology. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go down there and I'm going to do this and donate 
this, it's, it's been on and off the site, it's back on the site. I actually did the Lyric Theater a couple years ago too, it's not on their site right now, but um, if they ever want to put it on, if you have a connection there, I spent eight hours doing that, and it's on, I have it. So if you want to see the Lyric. But let's, let's take a tour, I'm just going to put the mic down and just show you what you can do. And any of your friends or family that come to the website, anywhere in the world, can go on the website and log in and do the same thing I'm about to do. This is the uh, floor plan view, and it, it may have changed, I am going to, I've got a four and five year old boy, so time is of the essence, but I am going to attempt to do the um, top floor and the basement as promised, but I'll do a little tour here for you. This makes me think of our teachers that are volunteers at the museum, Judy Woods, Nancy Crawford and Antoinette Henry. I mean, they are so good at telling people as they walk through in real life. And um, I learned when I tag along the Huns behind school children, and we all should come down and um, just go through with them too. All the yearbooks are there. Does somebody want to uh, know something you wanted? To Here's a microphone if you want to you see something you see in there and that you yeah, may have done it. This is interesting. We've got to do this another time, I guess. Well, I'm just going to I'm just going to show you one thing that was super interesting to me when I was doing this. I walked over because my grandfather, as you know, played at Stewart High School. He's the quarterback. Played at UF. I went to Florida State, so I got the sound. That's okay. But I remember doing this one early morning, and his picture was up there, and I, I can't zoom in, but the, that football team, and, and Freddie Ferguson, all, all those grades were on that. But you can do this anytime you all want from your own computer and walk through, and this is, if you scroll down here, that's the floor plan view, and then you can do what's called a dollhouse view, and you can just jump in wherever you want. And Zoom right in. Enjoy. Just quickly, I want to thank Sandy and all of you and hope that this will get you to come out and join us. Uh, and once again, I want to thank the board and the volunteers and Betty and Ruth, the two employees. It is a fabulous, wonderful organization, and we love it. So come out and enjoy the warmth. Thank you.